Hey guys, it's Infinite Dice. Um, just showing you the update for 4.5 boat parts. Um, there, there's a lot of things that have changed uh, um, right down to the very roots of the mod itself. So um, uh, the float code and everything has been uh, revamped and uh, also code has been added to uh, account for damage uh, from Skillful. So everything's kind of uh, integrated um, and should be working together much nicer now than it was in the past. So uh, with the new release comes a new carrier and the R5, I have this labeled as the R5 carrier because it will pretty much stay the same. Um, this is not a, the R5 release, this is the R4.5 release which is kind of a step, uh, stepping stone to the next release which will include other, other ship type uh, called the warship. Well, you know what, I'm not going to release too many details right now because they're still up in the air as to whether or not I want to include uh, certain ones, but um, uh, I am strongly thinking about a catapult system for the ships to get um, aircraft up into the air quicker, um, especially those using the FAR mod. So for this release, uh, this carrier has, uh, you can see, six engines on it. These are the primary engines. Um, it's very simple just to click on them. You have a forward RPM limit and a reversing RPM limit. So when uh, the engines are going forward, it looks at that limiter, and when the engines are going reverse, it looks at this limiter down here. Um, that's so that you're not speedboating in reverse. Uh, reverse can then be used to reverse uh, one side of the ship and turn quickly. So the way I have it set up is when you hit 7 on the keyboard, um, all the engines on this side at the back the main engines will reverse and the engine at the front right will turn on and that will basically this will basically push the bow to the left so you're getting an overall turning effect which really makes the ship turn quicker because the modeling in in the in KSP not only for the air but also for the water doesn't really take into consideration um, I mean it uses drag and it uses it uses uh, rotation drag um, but it doesn't actually look at the streamlined shape of a of an overall vessel and then account for how that vessel would want to track through either water or air so the problem that that being the problem it doesn't want to straighten itself as easily once that turn is complete or when it's turning it wants to turn in a strange manner which wouldn't normally look which wouldn't be realistic in real life so by putting a rudder like this reversed at the front, you can basically um, make it behave a little more naturally. And that's what I've discovered, and that's why the carrier has a reversed um, rudder at the front. As uh, pointed out in the, in, the, in the craft details in the hangar, you can hit 6 to activate the engines. You're going to see it turns nicely. Now if we turn hit 7, we can turn to the left just using the engines. So that's most evident by looking backwards. That's just using the engines, not um, turning with the rudders as well. To add the rudder, it double, it almost doubles the rate of turn. So if we turn the reversing on the left-hand side off, you can see that just using rudders slows it down a little bit, turning. Um, to reverse completely, 7 and 8 reverses both side engines. Again, you're not going to go as fast in reverse because it only uses one-tenth of the engine power to go backwards. Uh, six toggles the engines on and off, of course. And everything else on this ship is pretty much the same as it's been in the past. Now, the engines themselves are... Um, uh, we'll show you... Uh, now, the temperature is coming from Skillful because I have Skillful running at the same time. It shows you the thrust or the uh, if it's active or not, um, if the if the propulsion's actually running in reverse. Next up is the mini sub. The mini sub uh, comes with a launch platform um, simply because uh, if you want to load kerbals onto it, there's no room on the on the sub to actually put a kerbal. So what I've done was I've put two little pods here because the sub only holds two guys. You simply have to launch it, take the kerbals out of here. Make sure you put the kerbals in first by hitting fill and then um, putting the guys in and launching it. Now a few changes have been made. Um, the 
limpet mines are not going to be in 4.5. Uh, I don't. I didn't have the time to code them, and they will be behaving slightly differently than they were in the past. So I just left them out. There will still be a plug, and the plug is now a remote, uh, like a probe core. So basically, if you don't want to use kerbals in it, just put the probe co core um, um, part here, and you'll be able to use it remotely without a kerbal. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. So after launching, um, we have the sub as it is when it launches. Now there is a sub layer here, like a, see you can see that I have the um, underwater layer, so that things look like they're actually underwater, which is a lot nicer than it normally is in KSP. <laughs> Only the submarines currently have that, but I'm going to change that in the future to, uh, for, for all vessels, kerbals and everything. It's just that there, there is some code changes to be made to get that to happen and uh, I didn't want to do it, I didn't have time to do it. So to release this uh, inside the craft file in the hangar, you're gonna, uh, where the notes are located, you're going to see the instructions for the key assignments. One detaches from the dock. Once you do that, it actually falls into the water. Um, you can then EVA a guy by jumping over to here, EVA a guy, drop him down, and then he can walk over to the ki uh, over to the. Um, sometimes they get sometimes they fall over even though they fix the code for that. Sometimes they do fall over, and just switch away and then back. Generally speaking, that will get them moving again, like that. So switch away to another vessel and then jump back again, and they're they're generally all right. So we just jump off. You can jump onto one of the fins, one of the dive planes, and then right click on the seat and hopefully he sits in the right orientation because I had to change something here so he might sit sideways. Okay, so he doesn't even... Okay, so he's below the ground and he's not... <laughs> okay, never mind. I'll have to fix that. Anyway, there's a, there's a few features on here that are a little more advanced than they were in the past. Number two on the, uh, on the quick keys, um, or you can assign it to another key later if you want, is the auto ballast. So auto ballast, say you go, say you flood the tanks, and you go down to like minus 50 meters, and you want to just kind of just hang at that, at that altitude, at that level. Um, you would simply hit two, and it would basically start removing ballast until it levels out in the water. Now, if, of course, if you're way too heavy, it may not do it quick enough, and you might want to manually adjust. Um, for fine-tuning, uh, like a hover, you simply want to then press 2. Once it detects that it's hovering enough, it will turn itself off. So you, once started, you can't turn that off manually. On the keyboard number 3, it's going to auto pitch level. So pitch level meaning the relation uh, of the nose or the tail of the submarine to the actual horizontal of the planets, you know, of the water surface. So if the nose is hanging low in the water, you can you can get that corrected by pressing 3, and that is toggleable. So here you'll see auto buoyancy activated, auto pitch activated. So if I do auto pitch activated, oops, is true. Now it will start if there if there is any um, water in the front, it will start funneling it to the back or vice versa if it has to level it out. Now with no water in there, it will actually sit and do nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 4 on the keyboard and flood the tanks a bit and stop. So 4 to start and 4 to stop flooding. Um, so, so, so we've leveled it out a little bit. We'll leave the auto leveling on and we'll flood a little bit more just to get us under the water. And this is the process you're going to have to use to get this thing sitting properly in the water. Now, when you throttle forward, you're either going to get a nose up or a nose down based on its on its previous disposition in the water. So the 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 thrust just kind of compounds any any kind of pitch issue you have. The thr the, the actual thrust of the engine will compound that into a, into a more into more of an issue uh, unless you correct it right off the bat. So if we take a look in the re in, in the stern, we're going to see that that water is still probably being pumped out. Maybe not. Maybe it's turned itself off. No, it hasn't. So basically, it's not pumping anything because it doesn't see that there's a pitch problem. So so that that's good. It should be sitting fairly level in the water. So what we do is we can hit 6, just like the other ship, to activate the engine and give it a little bit of forward thrust. 
and off we go. So now what we want to do is try to use the dive planes to go down. And you can see that it's fighting it. It, does, it still doesn't want to go below this level because there's still too much bad. There's still too much um, air in the, in the sub. So what we do is we just pump in a little bit more. And you're going to see that the bottom, the back end gets tail heavy again. And then it has to, the, the auto leveling has to pump it out to the front. Now the front can max out, so if it gets too full at the front, it won't be able to pump any more out of the rear. You'll have to manually adjust these like you would fuel. So here we have a sub that's going down too quickly. So we've added too much water. So what I'll do now is I'll basically put on our auto, our auto a buoyant control. So it is a balancing act. Once you get it to the point where it's decent, um, it should be okay. You can then hit three to, to stop the pitch balancing. Now if you get strange behavior, it's good to take a look at how much water ballast is in the center as opposed to the outer extremities of the submarine. So you can see here that we have a lot of mass in the ends of the sub, which is not ideal. So you want your primary flooded mass to be in the center, and then you want just enough mass in the ends to tune the balance in the water. So the problem with this right now is that I'm noticing there's very strange, unwanted movement in the submarine. It's because most of my uh, most of my um, water ballast is in the tail and or, or in the stern and the the, the um, bow. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of that mass of, of 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 ballast is in the center. If you want it perfectly balanced, then you want to have the mass in the center be higher than the mass in the in the extremities. That's all you have to remember. Once you get a perfect balance pitch-wise, or close enough, so as you can see now, I'm able to control this in a much better, like I can go back to back side to side, and I can control this in a much more predictable and easily changeable manner. Whereas before, it was, it was drifting all over the place on me because I had too much mass in the tail and in the, and in the bow. So this is perfectly balanced. I could take this into fight some baddies now. So uh, coming up from the coming up from the depths, you want to simply um, reduce your speed to a minimum. And what we do then is we blow tanks, which is five, and only blow half. Only blow half of what it took to get you to sink. You're going to see that you're coming up pretty quickly. If you're coming up too quickly, add a little bit, and you're up. Once you're up to the surface, you can blow the rest of the uh, ballast. Once you do that, if you take a look at the center, the center is empty. If you take a look at the front, it still holds those perfect tunes that you put in there to, for, the, um, for the perfect balancing that you wanted with the submarine. Okay, that's about it. Um, this submarine can hold a couple of the uh, torpedoes, and you can do some pretty hefty damage with it. Uh, the speed is limited, um, so it's not as fast as a regular submarine, uh, but it is smaller and uh, can kind of it might be able to sneak past uh, otherwise, uh, you know, something that the bigger sub couldn't sneak past.